Hi, this is Jade IFAST University, and today I'm going to talk to you about two things. One, how to teach your clients to get in and out of the rack with a barbell exercise like a squat. Um, a lot of times I see my clients not paying attention to how they unrack the bar and how they rack the bar. And I think that's a really key area to focus on with your clients to avoid injury and to get them to take the lift seriously from the moment they step up to the bar, not just the time they have the bar on their shoulders. Second, I'm going to talk to you about how I teach my clients to get on the floor and off the floor in a way that's safe and in a way that doesn't hurt their knees or their back or their shoulders because I have a lot of com complaints from my clients that they have these aches and pains and when you watch them move, whether, they're, whether it's the way they sit down or it's the way they get down to the floor, you'll see why they keep hurting their knees. And I want them to learn how to do these basic skills outside of the gym and to think about how to move outside of the gym. And so this is one way to start teaching your clients those skills so that they'll be successful, not just in the gym, but outside of the gym, which is ultimately what they're paying you for. An even bigger problem I see is when I see people putting the bar back into the rack, whether it's for a front squat or a back squat or any kind of squat, is they'll think they're done with their squat and so they'll come into the rack any which way and they'll typically put the, back, the, the bar back on the rack like this or like this and they don't have any sense of how to put the bar back in the rack in an organized fashion. So here's how I'd like to teach my clients to get back in the rack is when they're coming back in, it should be exactly like they're doing their squat again. So that motion right there should be the first two inches of their front squat or their back squat or their zercher squat or any other squat invo involving a bar. For me, it's kind of a mental lapse and it's kind of a failure to take the aesthetics of lifting seriously. I remember thinking, I remember hearing a story about the way that some martial artists approach their um, practice sessions when they go to the training hall. And especially in Japanese martial arts, there's this kind of aesthetic, there's this kind of moral imperative to get your mind in the right mindset when you go to the training hall and you unwrap your training bag and your clothes in the same ritualistic fashion. You unfold your training clothes and you put them on with a certain mindset that this is your meditative, con contemplative time to get into the correct mindset for good training. And so the way that I want to approach the bar is even when I walk up to the bar, I'm in the right mindset instead of getting the bar on my shoulders and then trying to get into the right mindset. So here is how a good unracking should look like. You get under the bar. Let's say we're doing a back squat. I'm, I already have to get tight. And then when I'm unracking it, I'm squatting the bar up. From here to here, it's like I'm doing my best one rep max squat. I've got my air, I've got my spine organized, I've got my abs, and I'm getting under the bar like this, and I'm squatting it up. That, that, it's like a two inch perfect squat. And then I do my set, and when I come back into the rack, I want it to look like this. I do my set, I come in, and I'm going to do a perfect two inch squat on the way down. So I never allow my spine to come down in this position. I never allow my feet to come down in this position. I don't allow my clients to rack the bar with their feet in this position. I want their feet set exactly the way, the way they would do a one rep max squat. And I want their spine organized exactly the way they would do a squat. The final point I'll comment on this racking is that I want them to hit the front of the rack and slide down into the cups instead of trying to put the bar gently down into the cups because then they know for sure that they're in the cups. So uh, some of my female clients hate doing that because they don't like making that loud noise when they hit the, the front. They don't like to make a lot of noise. Um, and so it's been a little bit of a process convincing them that this is for their safety. But once they get that idea that I'm concerned about their safety, they come around. Now I'm going to show you how I teach my clients to get down on the floor and get back off the floor, whether they're doing warm-up exercises or foam rolling, whatever it is, I want to make sure that they, when they go down and come back up, 
They're doing it in a way that's gonna be healthy for their knees and their hips and their spine in the long run. Keep in mind that I have a lot of clients in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and a lot of them come in with knee pain. And so I'll see them getting down to the floor doing something like this. So that's it for this month's installment of the exercise portion of IFAST University. And while we didn't talk about actual exercises, I hope you find the value in setting your clients up for success when they're unracking bars and when they're getting down on the floor and even in little things like putting weights away, putting plates away, putting dumbbells away and sitting down on, on chairs and standing up and doing that in ways that will be healthy for them in the long run. If I could summarize what we talked about today in two statements, it would be this. Number one, make sure your clients know how to move in a way that's at least safe and not horribly bad for their knees when they're getting up out of a chair or when they're sitting down on the ground or horribly bad for their back when they're putting a plate away or a dumbbell away or a bar back in the rack because that's just unsafe. And two, go beyond that and teach your clients how to move with some kind of elegance. I wish you could see my friend Lance do his warm-up exercises where he's doing like a walking Spider-Man to an overhead reach because every single part of his movement is carefully considered and minimally sculpted so that there's no wasted motion. And it's just beautiful to see great athletes move like that. And I don't know that anybody would mistake Lance for a great athlete, but the way that he moves throughout this warm-up exercise tells you that he takes his movement seriously. So instill those kinds of values in your athletes and in your clients, and you will set them, for, set them up for success in the long run. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching, and please feel free to post comments and questions on the Facebook page, and stay tuned for next month's installment. If you found this helpful or useful, and you know somebody who would benefit from this information, please feel free to share it with them. We're a small business and word of mouth referrals are the primary way we grow IFAST University. And we're really excited about all the growth that we've had and we look forward to having a much bigger impact on the fitness industry in the future. So thanks for all your help guys and uh, we'll see you again next month.